All right, thank you very much, Wes and Renata, for your presentations. I'm going to speak on behalf of the Design and Oppression Network. And we are very grateful to meet you guys because you have been an inspiration for our network here in Brazil. And you might not have known, but we were following your steps and then trying to build something that was uh, relevant uh, to our condition here in the geographic global south. However, the interesting thing about the global south is not so much about uh, the geographical location, but mostly about the movement of globalizing uh, different geographic locations, but especially globalizing those groups that have been denied their own ways of globalizing, of uh, meeting each other. And I would uh, definitely thank John for uh, supporting the globalization of the South with this historical meeting now, right? <laughs> very nice, very good. That's the first time we all three meet. And I'm really uh, happy to be here. I don't have a uh, land acknowledgement uh, discourse because we don't used to do that here in Brazil. I would say we don't have settler colonialism here. We have exploitative colonialism. So land is still uh, being uh, disputed and there is a, a very close by uh, major uh, uh, trial going on in Brazilian justice systems called the time limit trick. And it, if it goes through and it's proved all uh, this dispute will be over and indigenous people will not be able to reclaim land that they haven't claimed in the past. So that's the most important thing to say about land, which is really key in the history of Brazil. Uh, I don't know so much about it, but just I just wanted to mention regarding land acknowledgements. I speak from uh, Curitiba, which is, is an indigenous uh, name for this city. It is called, it's, it means a lot of pinion. It's a special nut we have here. And for sure, we don't have <laughs> settled uh, the issues of land uh, according to indigenous people. But indigenous people are not just the only ones who are, that are oppressed in this country. And the concept of social justice is not so widespread and not a, uh, socially accepted uh, as something that we can appeal in a rational way and people would say think it's ju having justice fine it's <laughs> it's rational no but if we speak about oppression then people get interested because that's some some a way of framing this reality that call upon some uh, counter hegemonic movements so I'm gonna speak a little bit about designing and against oppression which is a, refle a personal uh, reflection what I have experienced collectively in this uh, network. So I cannot, uh, I can only speak for myself, but I can also speak for my collective if my collective is uh, uh, somehow present now. So I can acknowledge that uh, Bibiana, Samia, Eduardo, Desire, Rodrigo, uh, they are all my uh, colleagues from the network. They are here. If I say anything that you do not. <laughs> Uh, uh, agree upon, please uh, type it on the chat uh, so we can really reflect a uh, collective perspective on this uh, short uh, talk. First of all, why uh, we focus on oppression? Because uh, it's definitely an issue that is discussed in the public sphere. For example, there are kinds of manifest uh, demonstrations, public demonstrations on the streets saying there's no, nothing like oppression, does not exist. And they would say Paulo Freire is just Bogos author. Um, and then in the 2019 uh, year, there was a really peak of these demonstrations against Paulo Freire and against his theory of oppression and against public universities that endorse this theory. It came as a, a long process of uh, growing up uh, right-wing politics. And why do they uh, um, criticize Paulo Freire? Because his book has been widely read and discussed in public universities at that time as a reaction to this growing uh, right-wing politics uh, policies. Uh, he was not alive, he's not alive, uh, but uh, he's alive through his books. And Paulo Freire, just to summarize, uh, describes oppression, not in terms of uh, something which is uh, immutable or something that does not change, but definitely he describes oppression as something that can be overcome. So we can react against oppression. That's why it's so dangerous to the right-wing politics because it creates uh, opens uh, possibilities for resistance, for conscientization, which is understanding historically how these oppressions came to be. He does not describe only one type of oppression, although he's more focused on the, the uh, uh, peasant uh, oppression, but 
his framework works for many kinds of, of oppression, like for example, uh, gender oppression, race oppression, and indigenous oppression as well. We, uh, in the universities, we are organizing protests until uh, to 2020 with the pandemia. We couldn't organize street protests any longer and uh, react in a meaningful, in a collective way. And we were severely affected by the pandemics in the politics uh, side. And that prompted us uh, to organize online. And then we co-founded this Design and Oppression Network, Design and Opressão. Uh, which, which involved many people from different universities in Brazil who were trying to find alternative ways of protesting. Uh, we met online and then we started organizing that, uh, some sessions. Uh, this brief this history of the Design Oppression Network is uh, written in a paper that is going to be published by the PIVO 2021 uh, uh, Proceedings, which is coming, upcoming. <laughs> but I will just summarize you, to you some uh, parts of this story. Uh, the first thing is that we found that we started an open uh, weekly reading group and a Discord server. We had to use Discord, not Zoom, because most people cannot use a uh, webcam in this uh, low bandwidth connections that we have in Brazil. And Discord is really good for audio uh, connections and it does its low bandwidth um, needs for including more people in the, in the, in the, place, in the different places in Brazil. We currently have more than 500 members spread throughout the country and we chat, we discuss in these reading groups and we start other actions, for example, synthesizing what we have learned by reading, again, Paulo Freire, uh, Franz Fanon, Augusto Boal, Bell Hooks and other authors that have theorized oppression. We uh, had these live streams, uh, videos that were quite popular on discussing what does these authors have to do with design? Do, are they uh, relevant to design? And of course, the, the answer we gave was yes, and why? <laughs> because of this and this and this, they are relevant in this and this, that way. But they are always relevant in terms of we have to change something because we are oppressing people by doing design in this way. But we had to understand how this uh, way was concretely um, reproducing in our everyday actions. And we started at some point experimenting with Augusto Boal's uh, theater oppressed uh, dramatic games and we had to adapt them because they are really suited for face-to-face uh, -face interaction but then we adapted with a, a lot of different tools that Discord give to us for example sharing pictures with anonymous authors and then we could uh, guess whose hand was this one <laughs> and by guessing whose hand is this one we can uh, discuss a lot about privileges about uh, uh, lack of privileges is this hand being shaped by the work that this person is doing or is shaped by other kinds of uh, gender or aesthetic uh, influences? And that was really interesting for us to understand how uh, those oppressions, they get embedded into our bodies, embodied in our shapes of the, our bodies and the way we also display our bodies to other people. Uh, we also played out with uh, image theater, another technique from the theater of the press. How do you do that? It's so bodily <laughs> online. Well, we tried something just not ideal, but the best we could do. Uh, model with 3D modeling, drawing assistance uh, tools, uh, for example, Magic Poser. We could uh, create these uh, quick scenes where we could share using whiteboard and discuss the different kind of uh, ways how oppression got uh, embedded into our bodies, not just in the shape of the body, but also in the postures we take in while interacting with other people. For example, if you are curved uh, and looking downwards, you are somehow expressing that oppression through your body posture. In another moment, uh, we really got deep into understanding ourselves as oppressors and seeing how the oppressors influenced our thought. The rainbow of desire against, again, another technique from uh, The of the Press was really amazing, uh, trying to put the cops in the hand out and then talking to them. And then one person would put out the cop and then another person would enact, uh, would act as if that person was the cop. And then we had a conversation with your cops in your head. And then <laughs> somehow you could get rid or at least know how to deal with that cop uh, so it doesn't uh, prevail over your own uh, wishes so you can still realize uh, and seek uh, fulfillment of your wishes even if you have someone inside you telling you not to do that 
we also extended this kind of uh, theater press experiences to a larger audience using especially theater forum, which is very well suited for YouTube uh, streaming. Uh, for example, in this one, we discussed uh, platform work impact uh, on design work as an impl implying that also putting designers as part of the problems because they design these platforms. They are requested to design interfaces that somehow uh, make it visible the exploitation, uh, the work, extreme work exploitation that is happening. And then also creating mechanisms for people that are being exploited to think that they are entrepreneurs, they are not being exploited. And we had to act this uh, using our own bodies, but also expanding those, the expression using these uh, nice virtual um, customs based on uh, augmented reality. We also experimented uh, discussing methodological colonialism, uh, re especially regarding this design thinking uh, method coming from uh, Stanford University and also IDEO company. Those are very influential in Brazil right now. And it's terrible because uh, they are not influential in a di bi-directional way. It's really on-directional. We just have to play by the rules as if design thinking was even hard coded than it was meant for. But especially because some people adopted it is as part of their consultancy. Then, as a consultant, uh, the person wants to just push the method and sell it as a ready-made product. IDEO has made that and had made has sold uh, this design thinking method as a ready-made thing for a Brazilian companies, especially the, um, development design for development programs. So we had this uh, interesting uh, theater rehearsing a situation, similar situation. It's not it's exactly a specific one, but that would uh, appeal to a broader audience and people could identify and see if they have been going on through this kind of uh, co uh, methodological colonialism that tried, for example, uh, to let the uh, Brazilian artisan to forget whatever she knew about design uh, as if she didn't have any thinking in her design, just uh, design doing and it had to be replaced by design thinking. That's colonialism <laughs> in the best way possible. Unfortunately, well, the worst way possible, sorry. Well, uh, we had these amazing, nice uh, moments of uh, con conscientization, building up consciousness about oppression uh, in Brazil, uh, and also people that from Latin America that were not Portuguese speakers, but could still uh, listen and understand. However, we could not have uh, people from the United States and from other countries that spoke uh, other languages than Portuguese that were not similar, because. Spanish is quite similar to Portuguese, but other languages are mostly not. Therefore, we organized this Designs of the Press online international course in English. And we had people from all over the world um, just coming and discussing the experiences of oppression and experimenting with these methods. And this uh, Designs of the Press course is totally uh, recorded and organized and shared online as an open educational re uh, resource so you can access that and still have the experience. Uh, it's not a full experience of participating, but we are planning to have some uh, similar uh, situations in the future, uh, open for English speakers and other languages perhaps. But the best part of the designs of the press course was definitely a music playlist with the finest Brazilian protest song. I definitely recommend you go ahead and add it to your Spotify or your, uh, your favorite uh, music listen system. And to summarize our experience at Design and Operation Network, uh, this is how it started. We asked ourselves, what can design do for the oppressed? But uh, why, why going through all these experiences or putting ourselves uh, in a, and recognize that we are oppressors first and then we are also oppressed in different relationships. We uh, understood that our role was really to see what design, uh, what oppressed could do with design. <laughs> and not, ju not just push design, but instead recognize the design that is already there at the, 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 the oppressed side, which is not somehow recognized as design. And so to summarize in a single sentence, I would say that currently the Design and Oppression Network is interested in design by the oppressed, for the oppressed, with eventual allies, which are not possibly historically oppressed, but that wanted to join the side of the oppressed because they understand it's an unjust situation. Against what? Against all forms of oppression, not as 
specific one because if you don't fight all forms of oppression then perhaps uh, the, oppress the oppressors they would find a way of switching one oppression for the other so i would really love to uh, listen to you uh, your thoughts and and have a nice conversation thank you very much and if any other members of the design oppression network wants to add anything thank you you can just join the conversation i guess 